EA Games challenge everything. This video is about survival. The Sims one was extremely difficult. Sims fly off the rails because they're hungry, tired, and lonely. So how challenging would it be to play the game with a complete house full of eight children, unable to cook for themselves, hire maid and cleaning services, among a plethora of other handicaps? Who will be the most capable, powerful child? I got this idea from another YouTuber named Sariafan93. The Home Alone Challenge. Eight children. No adults. Who will survive the cops? The nefarious clown. And the inferno. Day one commenced with a great deal of childish activity. Between 7 a.m. when we began and 8 a.m. when the school bus arrived, the children attacked the home, donning VR headsets and climbing like orangutans on the jungle gym. Much to the disappointment of Mortimer and Bella Goth, their new neighbors were not at home. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., school is in session. Then the youngsters returned home only to impede traffic for the angriest of bus drivers. It's all your nightmares in one. Eight children, unsupervised. Like a psychological experiment in anarchy. The girls participate in team and relationship building exercises. Push Meet and Flappaboo read books together. Octavia sits on the couch and stares blankly at both of them, not reading. This is neutral behavior, not really productive, but not destructive either. I've decided to just observe the children and make mental notes this first day. The boys engage in physical and competitive recreation, climbing on the outdoor playset, playing a risky game of VR, or fighting over control of the doorway like the Panama Canal. Dukakis played with dolls alone. Maybe he wasn't talking with the other children, but at least he wasn't causing a mess either. The chips came out of the fridge. Since children cannot cook, there would be no stoving or microwaving of any kind. The only option on the menu is potato chips. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I decided to intervene and send Flappaboo to the backyard telescope, a broken and overpowered item that can make your kids from stupid to smart in The Sims. The evening continued with video games, then swimming, then video games after swimming, and concluded with a midnight snack of, yes, chips again. Finally, at 7 p.m., Dukakis, Cornbread, and Peabody decided to embark on a productive hour of finger painting, very profitable at about 13 simoleons. Around midnight, the house was a mess and someone had broken the sink. No one took responsibility, so Pushmeat took it upon herself to swab the poop deck. It's a school night, so bedtime's at 3 a.m. The sun rose on day two and everyone sprang out of bed. Somewhat rested, but still full of childish energy from the first day. Only Cornbread missed the bus. He spent the day peering into the telescope, looking to the skies for answers while his peers wasted their time at school. I'm not lying, if you just keep your children at home in The Sims and have them look out the telescope all day, that's basically homeschooling them. Upon arrival home, the stupid children stood in front of the bus again. After about 24 hours of a childish explosion of pleasure-filled activity, the reality of life without grown-ups begins to set in. Mood decays. The alpha male claims his territory on the other boys. Weaker betas. Peabody is a slob. I decided to have Flappaboo call in a pizza to help rally the children who are incapable of preparing a large meal to feed one another. I also called the cops to make sure we could get support in case anyone attacked the house. It was becoming clear to me that well-behaved and upright children like push meat or cornbread were capable of a productive existence in the adult world, able to act convincingly mature on the phone and receive pizzas from delivery men, or even just take care of the other children. On the other hand, maniacs like Huckleberry spawned chaos by staking claim of a corner in the bathroom, like a troll under a bridge and prevented the other children from accessing the shower, sink, and toilet. Garbage piled up. There was still a child in the pool at 3.48 a.m. Dawn rose again on the third day. Dukakis ordered a pizza an hour before the school bus would arrive. Lunacy, but also a pretty baller idea. The school bus came and went. At 3 p.m., the unwashed and unhappy children arrived home to discover the arrival of Sonny the Tragic Clown, a classic Sims NPC, the nefarious visitor who arrives when you and your Sims mood drops too low. Most clowns cheer people up. Sonny is a real Debbie Downer. 
He upsets people by trespassing and participates in suspicious, borderline illegal activity. It started with innocuous but creepy behavior, like leaning over people's beds and coughing on them. Or standing in a vital doorway and crying. He's annoying and he makes everything worse. Bounded neither by night or day, at 3.53 a.m. he was still active, party bombing the kids and disturbing everyone's slumber, then obstructing more pathways with his stupid clown body. I tried trapping him in a room with panels of sheetrock. Too bad, he teleported away. What about separating the children's bedrooms? That might work so he couldn't party bomb all of us again and wake everyone up at once. Of course, this also meant that he could physically trap people in their cells by crying and coughing in front of them, which he did. I tried to ensnare him at a pool party. I failed to trap him. What about calling the cops? That didn't work either. Law enforcement is powerless against a slippery clown. Even the children with the highest executive functioning skills simply gave up on a good night's sleep. They did better by settling down in the backyard and lying prone to rest. And so Sonny continued his reign of terror, physically preventing Huckleberry from attending school after an entire night of coughing out the window by his bedside. So after one final session of virtual reality, Huck was unfortunately forced off to join the military due to his lack of attendance and failing grades. Roaches. Garbage. When Sonny picked up the children when they arrived home from school, I knew it was time for a counteroffensive. If anything, a clown can't resist a good birthday party. So I moved the table and chairs outside and constructed a shack around them, even hanging up his portrait on one wall to recognize him as the guest of honor. Cake was purchased. Gaiety was planned. Whose birthday was it? Well, uh, it had to be, um, the kid with the lowest grades. Celebration! Cake eating! Sonny was seated nice and deep in the room where the festive birthday firework was launched at the carpet. Pandemonium. Several piles of ashes and unfortunate visits from the Grim Reaper later, Sonny narrowly escaped his physical demise. But as every good Sims 1 player knows, art imitates real life. If your smile's a frown, then down with the clown. What I'm trying to say is, if you burn the portrait, that destroys his soul. Sonny was finally defeated. Gone forever. Speaking of which, we were also down to only four of the remaining participants. All of the surviving children were smart, but the rough home situation had prevented them from attaining a higher GPA. Peabody had a D, and in a bad mood was in the express lane for military school. You see, even if you go to school, but you're in a bad mood, you go down one notch of a letter grade each day. That's just how the American educational system works, folks. Who was the most powerful child? I decided to interfere and turn up the heat in this metaphorical oven a bit more. After all, necessity brings out the true nature of people's character. So I squandered the last of the money on ordering a deluge of pizzas to our doorway. Pizza, pizza, pizza. On the one hand, this would coat the entire home in a layer of delicious cheese and allow the child capable of eating the fastest an opportunity to sprint ahead of his peers and stage an exciting comeback at school. On the other hand, it would galvanize the other children, unable to eat as fast and starve them of vital pizza required to maintain a high GPA. So I staged this evolutionary experiment. The board was set. I demolished the entire house to have enough money for what would come next. The perfect arena to test my Sims metal. All the best furniture. One for everyone. Three golden toilets. Three VR headsets. Three fine chairs. Three fridges. And defense of caring, loving teddy bears to shield them from sadness and adversity. With a robot butler and a skeleton maid, which child could pull herself back from the brink and come back without failing out of school? Conversations were had. Games were played. Telescopes were looked into. Refrigerators were reached inside of. The first two girls saw off Lil Debbie in short order. She couldn't take the heat. One more failing day of bad mood at school, and she was off to the academy. But what came next? 
I didn't see coming. Sabotage and skullduggery. Pushmeat drained the other girl for her social meter, then boxed her into the bathroom with a bad mood so that she was the only one to go to school, able to pass the class, barely with a D-. Textbook takedown. One of the most brutal backstabbings in Sims history. Pushmeat was, indeed, the most powerful child. Anyway, time to save. I don't know what I'm going to do with this or the rest of the neighborhood where I've completed all kinds of bizarre science experiments in this game. But she's destined for great things, I'm sure. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks be to my patrons for allowing a constant stream of pizza delivery men to leave Italian cuisine at my doorstep each day. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time.